Make sure you're comfy because it's story time. <laughs> I am so lucky that in my class I have so many talented writers and they keep sending me their stories. So I'm about to read you five stories that Mason has written. The first one is called Coronavirus. It was a normal wet Wednesday. I had been to school and my mum had been to work. Grandma had picked me up from school as always on a Wednesday. For tea she had made my favourite which is carbonara. After tea we sat down to watch the TV and Granada reports came on. They were talking about a virus that was in China and was spreading really fast. They had thought it would come from someone eating bat soup. I thought that was silly because who would eat bat soup? After a few days, we found out it was spreading all around the world and was making people very, very poorly. I decided that I needed to do something about it. But what could I do? I'm just an eight year old boy. I went to bed that night and dreamt that I had superpowers. I could see everyone that was poorly with my amazing eyesight and I had special lasers that could kill coronavirus. When I woke up the next morning, I was thinking about my dream when I realized that I felt different. I looked in the mirror in my grandma's bedroom and saw that I had turned into the boy in my dream. I am a Batsuit boy. I ran downstairs and shouted my grandma and granddad to show them what had happened. I could see straight away that they were okay and didn't have the virus. I could fly like a bat and I could see for thousands of miles from up in the air. So I went out and flew all over the world killing the coronavirus. It was really hard work, but I was so happy that I could make everyone better again. After my busy day, I went back to grandma's. She had made my favourite tea, curry. Yummy. It was time for bed, so I said goodnight to grandma and granddad and went to bed. I fell asleep dreaming about Batsuit Boy and everywhere he had been and what he had done. When I got up the next morning, it all felt like a strange dream and I realised it was. Coronavirus didn't exist. A day at the beach. One sunny morning, Grandma and Grandad went to the beach. They played with the beach ball, went for a swim and made sandcastles. Then, all of a sudden, they saw a shadow. Grandma said, did you see that? Granda replied, yes, it was a vicious fire-breathing dragon. That's what I saw anyway. The dragon was circling their heads and they were thinking it was hungry. For some reason, the dragon stopped flying and just sat on the beach. And Grandma and Grandad had noticed there was an arrow stuck in the dragon's body. It had got stuck when he had flown over Buckingham Palace and the guards had shot him with a bow and arrow. There was also a sword sticking into him that the guards at Mason's Palace had thrown into the air whilst trying to kill the dragon. Grandma and Grandad pulled out them out one at a time. As they were pulling them out, the dragon was breathing fire because it was really, really hurting him. He was so grateful to Grandma and Grandad for helping him. He took them all over the world to see the different animals they had never seen before. The Naughty Elf. One sunny day, Grandma and Grandad went for a nice walk around Sale Water Park. They had to be very careful as the whole country was on lockdown because of the coronavirus. When they got home, they went into the garden to sit in the sunshine. But the garden was all messed up and in the bushes was an elf peeking out at them. Grandma asked the elf why he had messed up her beautiful garden. Joey the elf told Grandma that Santa had sent him to Grandma's house because he was being very naughty in the North Pole and thought that Grandma would be able to sort him out. Grandad told Joey off and made him tidy up the mess in the garden. Then they rang Santa and told him that Joey the elf was being good now and he had cleaned up all the mess in the garden. Santa said thank you to Grandma and Grandad for sorting Joey out and said he can come back home to the North Pole. Joey got his remote out of his pocket and pressed the big red button. A big hole appeared and Joey had to put a specific number, 1579, and then he was gone, teleported back to the North Pole. My favourite, the silly squirrel. It was the middle of a really cold, snowy winter and I had just got home from school. Miss Mayles had set us all a task to do over the weekend. She wanted us to see what wildlife we could see in our gardens. We are really lucky where I live because we get all sorts of animals in our garden. I had made myself a little chart of all the different kinds of birds that I had seen. We had a lot of cheeky squirrels as well. We saw squirrels' nests in the trees just behind our back garden and the daddy squirrel was running around looking for the nuts that he had buried in the summer but he just couldn't find them. He looked under the rose bush, behind the bird table, down by the side of the fence, but he still couldn't find them. He had dug holes in the snow all over the garden. It looked like molehills. He got tired of looking everywhere, so he shouted Mummy Squirrel to come and help him. So, Murray, Mummy Squirrel is a little bit silly because she walks across the washing line, hangs upside down under the bird table, and sometimes she even sits on top of the umbrella. 
They looked under my scooter, behind the bikes and around the fence posts. She ran along the fence, wagging her tail at me to say hi. I decided that I would put some nuts and fruit out for them because they couldn't find theirs. They gathered the fruit and nuts and gave them to the babies. Later on that day, they scurried across the fence to our back door where they danced and played in the snow. The next morning, all the snow had melted and there, at the end of the garden, there were all the silly squirrel's nuts. The animals day out. It was the beginning of the summer school holidays and I was looking forward to Chester Zoo. All the zoos and farms had been closed and in lockdown because of the coronavirus. We all hoped that it'd be gone by now, but it hadn't so we couldn't go. I felt gutted because I'd been looking forward to it. My mum suggested that we go on YouTube and look up Chester Zoo virtual tour. Mum made a picnic and we sat down to watch the tour. We looked in the elephant enclosure at first, but they weren't there. Then we went to the giraffe house and they weren't there either. We thought it was very strange, but we carried on the tour. Next we went to see the lions, tigers and chimpanzees and just like the others, they weren't there. We decided to go up to the play area where there were swings, slides, climbing frames and lots of other things to play on. I couldn't believe my eyes. All the animals were on the playground. The group of giraffes were on the roundabout. The roundabout was going so fast that their necks got tangled up with each other. The sea lions were on the seesaw and clapping their flippers and shouting really loud. The lions and tigers were playing chase together on the slides. The chimps were in the sandpit and throwing all the sand at each other. But we still couldn't see the elephants anywhere. We sat on the carpet in our living room and had our picnic. It was delicious. My mum makes the best picnics ever. After our picnic, we decided to go to the monorail around the zoo to see what else we could find. We finally found the elephants. They were playing piggy in the middle with a massive beach ball. They threw it that hard that the monorail, at the monorail, and it made me jump. The poor little elephant had no chance of catching the ball. I felt very sorry for him. Next, we found the orangutans. They weren't in the normal house. They were playing tig on the climbing frame with all the other little monkeys. It looked like... Like all the animals were having a great time, this is what they must do whenever the park is closed. On our way back out the zoo, we went back to the playground for one last look at the animals. This time the hippos were on the seesaw, the rhinos on the roundabout and the crocodiles were on the slides. It was so much fun watching them all playing. I think I'll do the virtual tour again when the zoo isn't open.